Lisa is now going to dig another trench, right next to the one Tim just made, and she will put the soil she digs into that first trench. I'm going to start by bringing the spade six inches back from the first, first trench. Bring the spade to a 45 degree angle, put my foot on the shoulder, and just lean into it. Nice and easy, Let's just, just like that. Lean back, break the soil, move in, lift, and slide off at the same time. Lisa continues digging the upper trench by taking two shovel bites each one about six inches thick as she moves along the digging board until she's completely dug out the second upper trench. And she's filling in the trench Tim dug with the soil she removes. And if you're doing more work than this, then you're doing too much work. As you can see, I'm just letting the soil slide right off the spade. After digging out the upper trench with her spade, Lisa takes a digging fork to loosen the soil in the lower trench. I'm going to step onto the shoulder of the fork and just slide down. If I hit, if this doesn't go all the way in, I make an arc forward and back and it slides right down. Shift the fork back, come around, slide back eight inches and do it again. Once you've completed three to five trenches, you will want to rake the bed using your bow rake. Lisa demonstrates the proper technique. A lot of people, when they go to rake, they want to use a lot of effort like this. And it's really not necessary. You can just reach out and shift your body weight back and rake over the top, just like this. And you don't have to worry too much about the clods. Just even out the soil a little bit, the water and the sun will break down the clods naturally. Because of the double digging, there's more air in the soil and more volume of soil overall. Remember the soil that was put into buckets when Tim dug the first upper trench? You can use that same soil to fill in the final trench in your bed. Now that you've finished the trenching process, it's time to smooth and level the bed. Once again, you'll use your bow rake, making easy, smooth strokes throughout the bed. It's important to do this before you add the fertilizer and compost in the next step. We're leveling the bed now because after we've applied the fertilizers and the compost and they've been sifted in, we don't want to have to reshape the bed final time. Tim and Lisa will now be adding organic fertilizer to the bed. This is a fertilizer. It's pure alfalfa meal. This adds nitrogen, calcium, and other trace minerals to the soil. And I'm going to show you how to apply it. I'm going to take about a third of what I have total. And I'm going to apply it. We've got some wind, so I'm going to be very close to the soil. And I'm going to do half of this area. I'm going to work in a real easy pattern here. Then we come to the other side. The final third of what I'll have, I'm going to distribute evenly and fill in the gaps. So next we're going to apply kelp meal, specifically cold water kelp meal and it's good for potassium, trace minerals, and growth hormones. And we're going to apply it the same way we applied the alfalfa, but a little lighter. The organic fertilizers we use today were alfalfa and kelp meal. The organic fertilizers that you'll use, or the amounts, could easily be determined by a soil test. Now it's time to apply compost to your soil. You need to apply between a quarter and a half inch of compost to the surface of your bed. Watch as Tim and Lisa evenly distribute the compost. 
When beginning a new garden, you may not have had the chance to build your own compost. In that case, you may need to import some compost. The goal, however, is to build your own. For the critical step of incorporating the fertilizer and compost into the upper two to four inches of soil, here are three easy to learn techniques. First, Tim shows us the break chop method. It looks like this. I'm not moving the soil. Just gently breaking up the dirt clods. It's easy and anyone can do it. Next, Lisa uses the fork to demonstrate the sift dig. The sift dig, with a sift dig, you move the tines two to four inches into the soil and then just lift up. Tim comes back with a fork to show us his favorite, the twist dig. This is my personal favorite. So with the twist dig, your closest hand to the tine acts as a fulcrum. And what's fun is you're going left and right, up and down and in and out all at the same time. It's so fun. Once we've finished incorporating the compost, the bed is ready to be planted. If this is not going to happen right away, then we water the bed. You want to water like a soft rain. The edges of the bed dry out twice as fast, so we're gonna water the edges twice as much. Let's review what we have learned. We prepared our bed for double digging by loosening the soil and then weeding the bed. We dug a series of 24 inch trenches along the length of the bed. The upper trenches were dug out using a spade while the lower trenches were loosened using a spading fork. As we continued to double dig down the length of the bed, we repeated the process of digging and loosening each trench. After three to five trenches, we raked the bed. Once the trenching process was complete, we leveled and shaped the bed using a bow rake. After the bed was leveled, we added the organic fertilizer and compost. We incorporated the compost and fertilizer into the soil using one of three techniques, the rake chop, the sift dig, and the twist dig. Once we finished incorporating the compost, the bed is ready to be planted. If this is not going to happen right away, then we water the bed. Double digging is essential to the biointensive method because we are growing healthy soil as well as healthy plants. A well-prepared bed with loose soil to a depth of 24 inches allows the roots of the plants to grow more evenly and to provide a steady supply of nutrients to the rest of the plant. And the plant roots have so much loose soil to grow into that more plants can grow in a given area. This means more food from a small garden. These ones are the tree colors. We had them for dinner last night. Oh yeah, I remember those. Those were good. They are great.